we're going to move the ball forward and keep going. And uh, I laid some good groundwork for everybody last night and just kind of want to do an overview of where we're at. Um, but before we do that, does, I don't know why like hitting record somehow made me feel a little bit more nervous <laughs> and change my presentation. That's kind of funny. But uh, so where, where is it here? So um, if we look at like uh, everything from types, methods, interfaces, readers, writers, go routines and review, that stuff I'm still working on and I'm going to be still building out because uh, I kind of want to present some of that stuff in a little bit of a slightly different way. So these things will be changing. Regardless, we're gonna, just going to push forward and then, you know, if I come up with anything great, we'll come back and visit it. So today we're going to kind of look at some of the stuff I learned at this training I went to um, Thursday and Friday and Saturday last week, which was really great, by the way. And then I hear you guys already did a little bit of Jason, yeah, last week? A little bit. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at Jason again and, uh, and then a quick review of packages, mostly just because I want to make sure that you have an assignment where you're working with packages. And we already touched on packages somewhere back up there, but we're going to do a quick review of packages. I'm not going to talk too much about networking. or we'll, we'll do a little bit of an overview. And then uh, hopefully today we'll get to creating some TCP servers. And, uh, and so, you know, I want to start moving into doing web stuff. And uh, so this will correspond to week five of the boot camp. Sorry, day five of the boot camp. Day six of the boot camp, if we get through all that. We hit TCP servers day six of boot camp. And uh, so we're in week four out here. So if we're trying to do one day boot camp for each week of the semester, I think we're doing great. And uh, we'll get into some really good territory pretty quick. So just a couple of things. Uh, the person who put on the boot camp, his name was Bill Kennedy, William Kennedy. And he's the author of uh, Go in Action. Sorry, I just called it the boot camp, the three day. He calls it hardcore go. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was hardcore. <laughs> I consider myself to be a pretty intense person. And I was like, wow, man, this, is, this, is, this training's living up to its name. This is pretty intense. So he, he wrote this book. And I really like, uh, I really, uh, um, just my sense of being with him is that he's a real subject matter expert. And he's got a really good handle on the language. And he presents things in a really nice way. And so I uh, highly recommend this book. And we'll also take a look at one of his blog posts and when he found out I was teaching this at Fresno State and at Fresno City College, he was very excited and, uh, and he offered all of you all could use this book for free. And so you can now download this book as a resource right here on the Blackboard page. And uh, if you just happen to be watching this video on the internet, you could go purchase it at Amazon <laughs> and send, send Bill a little bit of money. So that's, uh, that's where that, that book's at and uh, take a look at it. Um, and then if, uh, as we're going through things, you know, like uh, one of your assignments, you know, some of your assignments will be like to create stuff, you know, obviously, and you can find the code for that on GitHub. I often have the solutions for you, but I'm also going through and I'm indexing all the videos from Summer Boot Camp. And so you can click on this link right here in our syllabus, Index to Videos, and it will take you to an index of all the videos. And again, if you happen to just be watching this online, at the bottom of each YouTube video, on a lot of them I've... Uh, included a link to this this resource right here and so you can just look through here and you know we're doing basically day six with TCB servers and so that's where I got to and um, in you sort of going through summer boot camp and you know translating that into presentations PowerPoints for us and also putting together assignments so here at, at minute seven and fifty seconds Caleb talks about scalable TCP servers and so when you're, you know, doing your assignment, if you kind of want to hear a different take on it, you could come in and look through this index and find whatever it is, you know, just with control F, hopefully it'll take you to it. So, uh, so that's, a, that's a bit of an overview, lay of land, where we're at and where we're going. Um, how are you guys doing? How's, uh, how's morale? How's show of hands, how many people are like, oh, I'm still enjoying this and this is good and I'm liking it, cool. How many uh, other people are feeling a little bit of not so much that? Let me see your hands. Anybody? A little bit? All right. So if you just want to hang out afterwards and maybe we could chat and see what we could do to help make it enjoyable for you guys, uh, definitely. That's... I just wanted to, I don't know if anybody else has said this, but you did ask me. I'm loving it. Cool. Anyway, I'm cool. I'm loving it, but I'm a little behind in my presentations. So yeah. I just wanted to let you know that I'm, yeah, I'm still getting used to it. I'm still getting used to it. I'm still getting used to it. I'm still getting yeah, no, no problem. I don't stress about that. Like, okay. get it done when you get it done. 
you know, I don't stress about it, you don't stress about it, that's much better. I stress about enough other things. Uh, so another thing that I learned uh, this uh, uh, at the training over the Thursday, Friday, Saturday was uh, Addison Wesley has a Go programming book coming out this fall, and they are Pearson Publishing. So Pearson's a really big house. This is really going to be a really good book. And, uh, and when we uh, saw this, I was looking you know, on Amazon, and when Bill saw this, Bill's like, wow, that guy hasn't written a bad programming book in 30 years. That's going to be great. I can't read, wait to read that. So just put that on your horizon if you're still wanting to you know, continue exploring this language. That sounds like it'll be a really good book. Um, so here is uh, one of the, oops, sorry. Here's one of the blog posts that Bill Kennedy, William Kennedy, uh, just posted two days ago. And, um, and his blog posts are really nice. And again, you know, like uh, he said, when he reads somebody else's post about Go, the first thing he'll do is he'll look at the code. And if the code is wonky, he doesn't even read the post. Like, why read the post? And so, I don't know. Like, again, I just really had that sense from him that, okay, this guy really knows what's going on, has a lay of the land, like he's really connected. You know, um, for instance, you know, we were talking, and when he found out I'm teaching this at Fresno State, he's like, oh, man, I totally got to tell, and I forget what the guy's name is, John at Google, that you're doing that. And so he told John and Google, and then I get an email from John, and John's like, can I talk to you about how that's going? We'd love to learn a little bit more about that. So now I've, like, got a conference call with John and Google to talk about how this class is going at Fresno State, right, because they're wanting to see, you know, like, how's the, uh, the language doing? But um, anyhow, so I just have that sense that Bill is really connected and knows what's going on in the language. So I think he's a good source to, to turn to when looking at stuff. And here he talks about composition with Go. And this is one of the things we covered in his training. And, uh, and composition as opposed to, like, you know, using inheritance. And composition meaning we're going to embed types as opposed to, you know, creating classes, subclasses, superclasses, things like that. And so it's a different way of uh, a different design paradigm, you know. Um, it is object-oriented, right? Go is object-oriented. You could do a lot of the object-oriented stuff in it. But here he's talking about composition and how, you know, what is the best way, the most idiomatic way to do that with Go code. So a really nice article, and uh, I recommend you peruse it on your own time. Goinggo.net, uh, there's the URL. And, uh, of course, you could just access it through the PowerPoint, or the, the not PowerPoint, but the slides. All right, so uh, more resources. You could have access to the entire training that uh, was presented. And uh, this link right here will take you to that on GitHub. GitHub.com. I don't even know. Arden Studios. Go training. And, um, and if you just go right to the slides here at the beginning, uh, then... You have day one, day two, and day three, so you can click on like day one, and then day one training, and then here's all the stuff that was covered day one, and so you could click on like, hey, how did he handle structs, and you could, you know, look at articles which he thinks are worth reading, and uh, and this is some of the code we reviewed, you know, when we were in there, and then, uh, you know, uh, exercise down here at the bottom, and this is how they're all set up, so you could try it out, and then the answer to the exercise, so you could see how did what was the solution he came up with. So really, another really nice learning resource. Um, yeah. And so uh, some of the takeaways. Anybody have any um, questions or anything before I just keep rambling on? Anybody have any comments? Anything there? No. All right. I'll keep talking. Uh, some of the takeaways. One thing he, he talked about is a new phrase for me that I really liked hearing about was mechanical sympathy and uh, building a language so that, how many people have heard that mechanical sympathy? Okay, one person, cool. But building a language so that it works really well with the hardware. And, uh, and he talked, you know, ad nauseum about all the different ways that Go addresses things to really uh, match how hardware is built today and the relationship between hardware and software and how hardware manufacturers haven't been motivated to really push the ball forward because software hasn't been taking advantage of it. And, uh, and now they're hoping that Go is you know, starting to say, look, we can now take advantage of all this, that it'll keep moving that ball forward. But designing the, 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 the language to work really well with hardware, take advantage of multiple cores and all of that. And I just like that phrase, mechanical sympathy, so I thought I'd pass that on because I thought that was cool. Uh, he also really emphasized that readable code is your number one priority, and that comes straight from, you know, like, 
everybody involved with, because Go is open source, so not just Google, even though it's supported by Google and started out at Google, it's open source, but everybody in the Go community, right, the open source community, readable code is the number one priority over being complex, you know, uh, and uh, even, even if you think, hey, I might be able to, you know, gain a little bit of performance, it's better to write code that's readable than to gain a couple of nanoseconds. And so that's, uh, you know, one of the things they really emphasize in the Go community. And then type, understanding type is the foundation of Go, Go programming, just really sort of getting your head around type. And uh, so there's some pretty cool things that we saw about type. So one of the things he really emphasized was that when you talk about type, type uh, provides two pieces of information, the size and the representation, right? So uh, how many bits are we taking up, the size and the amount of memory we're looking to read write, and then the representation, the representation of that memory, right? Int, string, float. So this all sounds, you know, pretty rudimentary and like we understand it, but, you know, this is just one of the things he was really emphasizing and in, in like, hey, don't just gloss over this point, but stop for a moment and think about it. And let's think about type because everything in Go comes back to working really well with type. And uh, so float64, for example, gives you the size and representation just right there, right? Uh, we know that, you know, the size is 64 uh, bits, right? Uh, eight bytes. And, uh, and then it's float. So we have decimals. So that's the representation. It's the float. The size is 64. Int, right? Int is architect specific. So if you're running on a 32-bit machine, uh, your int is going to be 4 bytes or 32 bits. And if you're running on 64-bit, it's 8 bytes. And we saw that in the documentation already, right? But again, you know, uh, we're, we're looking at both, seeing both of those pieces of size and representation in each type. And then uh, string is a built-in type. Also a reference type. So I'm just showing you a few of my notes here. And uh, string is a two-word data structure. Two-word data structure, which is interesting, right? And so uh, it's either 8 or 16 bytes. And the first word is, you know, a string is a pointer to an array of bytes. And then the second word is the length of those bytes. And, um, and, when we, we, uh, and then a slice is a three-word data structure, right, where we have a pointer to an underlying array again. And then we also have length and we have capacity, and so uh, three, three words. And then the thing that kind of came out of that is like, okay, now take a look at this. When you read the stack trace, and you can come down here and you could click on uh, these two right here, reviewing stack trace and packing. And, uh, and he had a friend uh, you know, who's gonna give a presentation, and his friend had some code, and his friend just got a stack dump, and he, and he put that up to his code to say, hey, look, I got this error, and, and Bill said, that, that stacked up doesn't correspond to your code. His friend is like, how can you tell, right? And the way you could tell is that if you look at, you know, what happens here, uh, we have right here, we have two and four. And right here we have two and four, right? And so that is uh, your length, that is your capacity. And then this represents the, add, the, the string right there. And then down here we have five, and the length of that is five, so here's the string. So here we have that three-word data structure for a slice, right, which is a pointer to an array, and then the length and the capacity, and that's the first thing we have there. And then here we have the, the, the string, which is two words, which is going to be a pointer to an underlying array of bytes, and also the length, right, those are the two things. And then over here we just have A, and what is A in hexadecimal? 10, right? So there's 10. And, and so that was like, that's how you read that. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So taking it back all the way, looking at the internals and how does the language work, right? So, you know, a slice is a three-word data structure. A string is a two-word data structure. And then just being able to translate that to looking at the stack, the stack dump. So that's just like one of the things that came out of the trading, which I thought was kind of neat. He also said, uh, make sure that when you are doing variable initialization, so always use a short variable declaration operator. So that's you know going to be in in the funk unless you know you are setting a zero value, then you want to use var. And so just stick with those two methods. And there's a couple of other ways that you could you know declare and initialize variables, but that's one of Go's warts. No language is perfect. Nothing's perfect. That's one of the areas he thinks that that's one of its warts. So when you're uh, you know the the best way to approach variable declaration initialization is always use shorthand unless you're setting things to zero value. Anybody have questions about that? You all know what I'm talking about? We've been over that territory. And so you can look through uh, the rest of these, these notes here, and then there are all the notes 
on your own, your own time. But that's a little bit of a takeaway from the training. And, uh, and when I was up there, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bill, Bill uh, was like, hey, man, this is great. I really like what you're doing. I love your enthusiasm for it. Why don't you come to my next training so you can learn more? I won't charge you. <laughs> so uh, I've got a, a – his next training's in Seattle, and looks like I'm going to be able to go up and, and uh, attend another two-day training. So I'm looking forward to picking up a little bit more there. Anyhow, comments, questions? Cool.